All right, we're back. Another day, another rainy day. Time to do a little inside work. We're gonna be doing a, a throttle body injection or TBI to carburetor swap. We're at least starting. All, not all the parts are here, but hey, we, can, we got a few more hours a day and we can tear this thing down, at least get a little, little progress ahead of us. So, show you what we're gonna do here. For those that don't know, this is a TBI or throttle body injection. Throttle body, two injectors, very primitive wiring and computer and yeah that ran these things forever and ever and they worked good when they were new but they get old the throttle shafts get worn out the injectors get old and clogged you accidentally set them on fire trying to run them yeah oh, oh fire, on fire. <laughs> this one runs not very well and i've thrown sensors at it i've tried rebuilding things i've tried replacing things and nothing i've done really works. I know it has good compression. I've compression tested the motor. So something here or in the computer, which no one really does anymore. It's really outdated and antiquated. So yeah, we're just going to swap it over to a carburetor. Like I said, most of the parts are coming in. We'll show you, you know, maybe tomorrow uh, when we get back on it, what we're going to put on. But first things first, we got to get all this mess out of the way. Pretty straightforward. Just going to remove uh, distributor, Throttle body, intake, obviously hoses, wires, all that's got to go. But one thing I like to do before I pull anything is I like to bump it over and get it on top dead center of uh, the compression stroke on cylinder number one. That way I can kind of mark where the distributor's at and kind of know where I'm at in the engine's rotation. So when I go back together, it's just, I don't know, just a little easier for me. So here's a little time lapse and, you know, let's get dirty or... All right, there we go. Got the intake off, distributor out, obviously all that. As you can see, you know, just need to take those and whoop. Yep, we're done with that. Get all that cleaned up. Part should be here tomorrow so we can put it all back together. And just so I can explain what we did with the distributor, I pulled this valve cover so that we can watch the valves, okay? So this is gonna be your intake and this is your exhaust. So you wanna make sure you're at top dead center on the compression stroke. So what you do is you turn, you put a uh, socket down on the crank, turn it over. You'll watch the intake open, intake close. And as it's coming around, it's really kind of hard to see. I got the light down in here. You can see right there. So this is the mark on the balancer. And then this is the indicator, and that has a little zero you probably can't see. So as it was coming around, turning it in this direction, just watched it until it got right there, zero. So in theory, we'll be able to put the intake on, put the distributor in, and the pointer on the rotor will be pointed always kind of in this direction with one. Then we can set it up, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. Ready to go. All right, we're back. Had to take a few days off, a little under the weather, but hey, we're back in the shop, another beautiful day. While I wasn't feeling so well, I did tinker on the truck a little bit and stuff. I don't know, I just just didn't film it. So let me let's catch you up, I'll, I'll show you everything we did. And just like that, ta-da! She's carbureted, basically kind of, sort of, except for, you know, that's not mounted and there's things missing and there's spark wire, you know, we'll we're, worry we're about that in a minute, but just to kind of, Catch up on what we did here. <clears throat> Obviously, we you saw we took all the old TBI stuff off, threw that in the scrap, went back with a carburetor style intake manifold. Now, this particular unit, we used this guy right here. That's a SUM226061. 
And this is going to be your carburetor intake manifold for any 87 to 95 Chevrolet, allegedly. And let me tell you the differences here. So the TBI heads, the two center intake bolt holes, they go in at a slightly different angle. <clears throat> so you can't really get it on there properly. So what this intake does is it's kind of hard to see, but you can see right there that that hole is actually slotted. And then it comes with these little washers that have an angle on it. Well, it has an angle and it has a slot part that's supposed to be on the bottom. But yeah, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get these to go on. I would get one side lined up, not the other. Ended up, I had to grind the slot off of it. So basically I'm just using it as an angle washer to, or I guess it would go that way, to correct the angle on the intake manifold bolt. Still works fine, but I mean, hopefully yours works better than these. Maybe it's a bad casting. Maybe this is a common thing. I don't know, but comes with those for the four center intake manifold bolts. So don't forget to use those. I would suggest getting the intake manifold bolt kit. I didn't, that was a pain in the butt. I'm using a mixture of aftermarket bulk bolts that I have and I had to cut the center ones down just a little bit because when you ran them all the way in to what I thought the correct length bolt was, it was barely touching the push rod. So obviously that's not good. Yeah, don't be cheap like me. Just go ahead and get the intake manifold bolt set. And in the back here, that's, that's going to be your run-of-the-mill, off-the-shelf HEI distributor. You can order that guy for any of your HEI uh, Chevrolet cars. I think that one originally ordered for like a 77 C10. So, been sitting on the shelf. We're going we're gonna to reuse it. And for the carburetor. Now, we're using the Edelbrock, and this is a 1405, meaning it is a 600 CFM, non, it's a mechanical choke. I should say non-electric. And I'm using this because I had it. It was free, came off a customer's car, he didn't want it. So I put a $35 rebuild kit in it and now we have a carb. Typically I like Hollies, but in this one, we're using this because it cost me essentially $35. Yeah, got the st carb stud kit still got to put in, reuse the water neck, had to put some plugs, so water plug. This is gonna be our new heater core. So it's a 5.8 barb to uh, the pipe thread for the front here. And then, yeah, looking back here, we plugged up these. So if you're running a non, so this one has hydro boost brakes. So I don't need a vacuum port there. So I just plugged it and there's a little plug in the back. So I think those were three eighths and a half inch plugs. Uh, yeah, went ahead and deleted it on the heat riser thing because we don't need that. Simple enough. So let's talk about the fuel system between here and the rest of the truck all right for the fuel system we're starting at the back went ahead went up to auto metal direct because they're right up the road grabbed a brand new 20 gallon so on the square bodies long beds are 20 gallons short beds are 16. got a brand new 20 gallon tank with a brand new sending unit inside of there is a brand new delphi or ac delco i can't remember whatever they want to call it fuel pump for this truck okay now this truck is going to be 30 i think 34 psi 36 what way more than that elderbrock carburetor needs so but we're still going to use it and we're going to put all the fittings and hoses on just the way it was and we'll start from the back and work our way forward and show you how we're going to do it so tank factory hoses let's work our way to the front all right coming up here to the front we have our factory fuel lines the feed is going to be an m16 1.5 o-ring return m14 1.5 o-ring yeah so uh, obviously this doesn't fit real good to that and we can't send 36 psi to this or whatever it is because it'll you know probably blow right past the needle and flood it and who knows what so here's what we came up with we're going to take these guys we've kind of bent them up out of the way we're going to tuck them right down here just a little bit so we're gonna have our feed and return and we're gonna reuse these because I've seen people cut them and flare them, do different things. Being this close to the heat of the motor and the exhaust and whatnot, I wanna make sure there's zero chance for fuel leaks. So let's walk over here to the table and I'll show you what we came up with. All right, so here's some of the components we're gonna to use to adapt the O-ring stuff to the carburetor. 
ICT Billet came out with these really cool 6AN flare to M16-1.5 O-ring, 6AN flare to M14 1.5 O-ring. So feed and return. You see the guys look like this right here. So we'll come off of that, right? And AN stuff is nice, but it's a little out of the budget. You know, we're trying to keep her a little more budget friendly. So we got a 6AN to three, it's hose barb, little summit adapter there. So we got two of those. So it's gonna come from the factory fuel line to this, this to that. Three, it's hose barb with the really nice fuel injection style clamps, not the regular worms, but the like really nice ones we'll show you. And then that's gonna go to our nice little Holly 12-887 fuel pressure regulator. Cool thing about this, comes preset to six PSI. So don't even have to mess with it. I bought a gauge, gonna put a gauge on it. Can't get the plug out of it. So, hey, good thing it's already preset. <laughs> Hopefully it runs fine. This guy was gonna get fitted with some, and it's got three ports, right? So in and out, in or out, in or out. And then that's the return. Okay, so in, out, return, three eighths NPT. We got us some straights. We got us some 90s to see what we like, what combination is going to work best. Comes with a nice little bracket to right there in the firewall. So yeah, let's talk about it. More be about it. Let's uh, throw this on and I'll walk you over it when we're done. All right, to go along with the never ending drama. So to give you an idea of the throttle bracket, it's supposed to go to this back intake manifold bolt hole in that little bolt hole right there. And that puts it way back here at a funny angle, way too low for the carburetor. So it needs to live, and when I say it, like this square in which the cable clicks into, right there, needs to live like here, right? So, oh, time to make some brackets. So you can see I already have one here. I have one here. So we're going to cut up the factory bracket and we're gonna make a little arm off of the carb stud here into there you need more than one mounting point with with uh throttle brackets like this so this is what we came up with and i'm gonna hack up the bracket a little bit and show you what end result looks like all right just like that we have a throttle bracket you see it ties in right here at the intake like we talked about simple little 40 to 5 degree bracket you know chopped up bracket there welded up Bracket here goes over, weld it up, top and bottom, a little of that rattle can ch -ch -ch. powder coat while it's still hot. She's good to go. Now, I mean, you could have made a whole new bracket from scratch, but to recreate this, I put my hand behind it, as you can see, this perfect square hole, ah, that's too tricky. Not, not for this particular truck, we're not going to those lengths. So we just thread the, thread the uh, cable through here, give it a whoop snap in all right and now we move up here to the carburetor slide it over the little stud now let's talk about this stud for a second all right for the little stud we have here this one came on the carburetor but i went and bought one you know because i didn't know that at the time so here's your part number eight zero zero nine for 77 later throttle adapter that'll go there and what i've done is to slid it over obviously take your factory little spring clip use it as somewhat of a, a washer i guess get it on there and then slide your cotter pin through something like that and bend that back over when i have an extra pair of hands or extra hand so that's how you do that move forward here we have a Dorman kit 59207 throttle return spring assortment. I've used two springs. If you look closely, there's two the black one and a silver. Why do I do that? If one fails, you'll have a second. With this thing, you know, fully actuated, there's no real natural return to it. So you'd hate to be, you know, on the wood, a spring break, pop off, who knows, whatever and yeah then you're hung wide open that'll that's how you tear your car up comes up here and hooks to this little let's see this is a spectra 4780 
little bolt on bracket to the factory bolt here. Bing, bing. Boom, boom. There we go. Yes, I could have made a cool looking bracket. Probably, you know, this is this is off the shelf at AutoZone. Bought it today. No problem. Simple as it comes. So now we have all that hooked up. Now we'll finish hooking up some fuel stuff. Some spark plug wires. I don't know. Maybe we're getting close. All right. On these HEI units, super simple to wire up. On the base of the distributor here, we got a little three wire harness that comes out. And that is gonna plug in right here. And it's the plug that's closer to the body of the actual distributor. And then we're gonna need, as you can see up here, it says tack and battery, okay? So we need 12 volt switch to go to battery. Well, just so happens our plug right here has this thick red wire coming out of it. That was what fired up our coil factory, snipped it off, put us a little spade on there, and then you just plug that in on the battery side, which is kind of hard to do one-handed. Oh, there we go. Got it there. And then coming out of this harness right here. Hold on, let me get it. This harness, this plug, I should say, that was all butchered here, has a wire cut himself one side it's purple with a white stripe had extended a touch put a little spade on it and that's going to go to the tack side of the distributor and what that's going to do that's going to fire up your fuel pump so that what this does is this activates these factory relays it goes back and runs your fuel pump so that's how you do this with the factory wiring now I did this because of a YouTube video, but my buddy Eric at Queen City, he suggested to run a dedicated circuit, so a you know a relay fuse circuit back there, just to kind of do away with all this wiring. Because his great point was, it, we're we're trying to get away from this '80s wiring, and I'm still using part of it. So I'll probably run a dedicated circuit, but for this right right this second, that will do. All right, and yeah. So for all of this harness, I'm going to leave this just for the moment, just to get it running, make sure there's no issues. And then I'm going to split the loom open and, you know, fill dress it all out and get all the stuff out of there I don't need. And that'll be that. So we've taken our timing light, all right here, boop, timing light, and we've set it, well, we had it zero. We marked the crank pulley. We put it at 12 degrees. We've bumped it over with a starter a good bit. Make sure that, uh, yeah, make sure that our timing's pretty close. We went ahead and filled the bowls of the carburetor. We took a little, little miniaturized Harbor Freight funnel and our fuel line right there, filled the bowls up. So now, in theory, in theory, we should give it a couple little wow, wow, wow's. And let's see, let's see what happens. There, there we go. Listen at her purr. Oh yeah. And just like that, we're carbureted. Oh yeah. Nothing like the sound of the first fire up after you've tinkered with something for days and days on end. In my spare time, don't get me wrong here. Yeah, so that's that, a couple little things. You know, we're gonna hook, we need some more vacuum hose to hook up the PCV. We'll hook up our distributor at timing. We'll worry about that when we get everything together. Don't wanna run it long with no radiator. Firing it up and letting it run for 15, 20 seconds isn't, isn't gonna hurt anything, so. Cool, hey, this is a win. So excited about this one excited to actually not have to push it really looking forward to that and not have to catch it on fire again so yeah now we're going to start tinkering around get some more work done on the back end of this thing and yeah we'll catch up with you in the next video so thanks for sticking around like subscribe you know the whole deal we'll see you next time bye